Hi everyone, I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the show. We're coming to you from my house again. We will be here for at least the next couple of weeks, which is not great, but not terrible either. At least I'm close to the refrigerator. And here, nobody steals my lunch, so. We had a big election today in Georgia. We have a possible showdown brewing between Donald Trump and Vice Poodle Mike Pence, and we'll get to all that. But first, I want to tell you what the big story is at my house, uh, toys. We have a lot of toys, and some of them I've grown to hate. Two in particular were gifts for our kids from my very well-meaning cousin, Mickey, who uh, seems to be doing her gift shopping in hell. Now, uh, I'll start with this item, which combines two of my son's favorite things, cars and dinosaurs, which sounds good, but let me just turn this on here. All right. So you hear that noise, that dinosaur noise? So it does the noise three times, and then it goes into this little song that I now hear in my dreams, that I assume someone sat down at a keyboard and wrote Da, ba, da, ba, da, 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 da. Now, usually it's not moving. Oh, yeah, you see, it has a human centipede type action where the little dinosaurs go up the big dinosaur's butt and then come out his mouth. And, and it just keeps going. Da, ba, da, ba, da, da. With a brain grating roar over and over again on a 20 second loop until you go insane. And I actually put some tape over it to, how do I turn this thing off? Turn this, <laughs> there's no volume button to lower it. I had to, <laughs> thank you. I don't know what killed the original dinosaurs, but I do know that one is dead. So Mickey also gave us this festive holiday phone, the Santa hotline. You know how kids love landline phones. Uh, now this phone, you don't turn on, because if you could turn the phone on, that would mean you can turn it off, which you cannot. The only way to turn this phone off is by getting a Phillips head screwdriver and taking the batteries out of the bottom, and that's fun too. Oh, wait a minute, there is an on-off thing on this. Oh, all right, oh, the on-off switch doesn't work. Okay, that's even more diabolical. Anyway, um, if you pick this up, Yes, and yeah. Now the thing is, this won't go off. It just keeps going and going and going, and there's nothing you can do about it. Although now that I see this, maybe I was. Anyway, uh, my kids love these little plastic nightmares. Uh, for some reason, okay, see, it won't go off. I'm hanging it up and it won't go off. Okay, thank you, Cousin Mickey, is what I wanted to say. I know you didn't mean it to be a prank, but it was a very good prank. And whoever it was who designed these toys and came up with these mind-ravaging sounds, my wish for you at, is that these noises you're hearing right now fill your head from now to eternity. Anyway, if anyone would like to own one of these fabulous items, They'll be in the recycling bin outside my house. All right. All right. Let's please get rid of this thing. All right. Uh, let's check in with Guillermo. See how he's doing. I haven't seen Guillermo. Hi, Guillermo. How you doing? Doing great, Jimmy. Now, what is your New Year's resolution? Do you have one? <laughs> Every year I have three, Jimmy. <laughs> Guillermo, tilt over to the side just a little bit because I'm thinking maybe you're. New Year's resolution, one of the three should be to take your tree down sometime. Oh, uh, maybe I will do it in the weekend. But okay. you want to hear my three years, uh, my three resolutions? Yes, I do. Okay, every year is the same thing. The okay. first one is to lose weight. Right. That never happened. Right. The second one is the most important, to have more sex. That never happened either. <laughs> <laughs> so the okay. third one is to be a better person. <laughs> the third one is to be a better person. And yeah. do you feel like you're a better person this year than you were last year? Yeah, I'm trying, yes. You're trying, all right. Well, that's the most important one, I think. And then sex <laughs> is number two. And then, of course, forget about losing weight. I like you fat, okay? All right, Jimmy, whatever okay. you say. All right, all right, so uh, we'll check in with you tomorrow. Well, the main event today 
was the runoff election in Georgia. There's, everyone knows there's a lot at stake. If the Democrats win both seats, they'll get control of the Senate. And if they don't, we've got at least two more years of this lumpy-faced son of a Mitch. Because the vote is expected to be close, it's unlikely we're going to have uh, final results tonight, which means the Republicans will have to wait until tomorrow to decide whether or not this election they were in charge of was rigged too. Whatever happens, I do want to say this. No politician, maybe no human being ever has emailed me more times and with more urgency than John Ossoff. These are real emails I got from the Ossoff campaign, a fraction of them. I must have got, I must have got 10 a day. We're choking back tears, Kimmel. We're running out of money. Kimmel, we're on our hands and knees. Kimmel, everything is falling apart. But if he doesn't win, somebody needs to keep an eye on him because I'm worried. Ossoff was up against the incumbent Republican Senator David Perdue. The other race was between Raphael Warnock and Senator Kelly Leffler. This is Kelly Leffler. Uh, her husband, you may know, owns the New York Stock Exchange, and her net worth is around a billion dollars, which makes her the wealthiest member of Congress. But for some reason, when she's campaigning, she dresses like there was a St. Patrick's Day sale at Linens and Things. Kelly Loeffler also owns Atlanta's WNBA team. And uh, this is a picture that the players on the team all posed wearing Vote Warnock shirts, her opponents. So nothing personal, boss. We just don't like you. Last night, the devil came down to Georgia. He was looking for a vote to steal. Donald Trump was in town, supposedly to support the Republican candidates, but really he was just there to be truthless to the toothless. Can you guess how long it took him to mention the election was rigged against him? Let's count the seconds together. Well, I want to thank you very much. Hello, Georgia. By the way, there's no way we lost Georgia. There you go. A new record, seven seconds. Four seconds longer than he lasted with Stormy Daniels, so that's something. Yelton John played all the hits last night, including this smash hit single from back in 2016. The most unhappy person right now anywhere in the United States is Hillary Clinton, because she's asking the Democrat Party, why the hell didn't you do this for me? True. Why didn't you do it for me? Still with the locker. I hope that when he finally goes to prison, Hillary has a rally outside it. Lock me up. I'll see you in eight to 11 years, pal. I hope your cellmate isn't a chubby chaser. Trump went through all the conspiracy theories. Even He even dug back up the widely debunked claim that his ballots uh, were thrown in the river. I hated it, Kelly, when we got ballots in from the military with Trump all over it, and they got thrown into a river. You saw that? They threw ballots into a river from the military with my name all over. We want Trump. Boom, goes into the river. That was just one of many instances of problem. That was just one of many instances of problem. <laughs> big problem. Problem bad many times. This is a big one for Trump. He brought the whole dumb family with him. And before Daddy Donald took the stage, the fraudigal son got to work greasing up the crowd. You saw last week he couldn't get Ossoff's name right. He said something totally different because he doesn't even know where he is. But, but he definitely got a lot more votes than Barack Obama did in 08, right? We all believe that, right? <laughs> no one's that stupid. No one's that stupid, folks. Well, I could think of one person who is. I see some of these you know, supposed Republicans out there saying, oh, you know, I don't like the way the game is played. I'm going to take my ball and go home, and we shouldn't go vote. I go, what? It is the dumbest statement made in the history of politics. When you're at a disadvantage, you don't take your ball and go home. You get out there and you fight harder. <laughs> Spoken like a boy whose dad never played catch with him ever. It was quite a night. We might not see too many of these in the future, but uh, if we keep our fingers crossed. But it's important to remember, campaigns aren't about winning or losing. They're about the incoherent rallies you have along the way and the memories that live on in your entertainment hutch forever. The maggot train may have derailed, but you can relive the great again.
with President Donald J. Trump's official MAGA Rally DVD box set. Four years of speeches in one magnificent collection. Is there any place that's more fun than a Trump rally, right? No. Whether you're poorly educated. I love the poorly educated. His African-American. Oh, look at my African-American over here. Or just plain fat. That guy's got a serious weight problem. Relive the dancing. The dissing. Does idiot Lindsey Graham? Slippy Joe and Crazy Bernie. Pocahontas. The mocking. Ah, uh, I don't remember. More than 10,000 hours of thick-headed patriotism. So many DVDs, you can build your own wall. Who's going to pay for it? Watch him make America great again. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. And again. Get those lights off. And again. I'll kiss the guys and the beautiful women. And again. People have to flush their toilet 15 times. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. Own Donald Trump's MAGA Rally DVD box set for one easy payment of $130,000. It comes out tomorrow. Go buy it. Available at Build the Walgreens. Well, I'll certainly purchase that. There were protests in Washington, D.C. today ahead of tomorrow's vote certification in Congress. The gloves were off and so were the masks at this rally. A real dipwit named Clay Clark took to stage today to convince the hardcore members of Trump's cult to kill themselves once and for all. Who here is up to the task of not wearing a mask? COVID is not deadly. The PCR tests were fake, and the treatments that actually work are being kept from you for fake reasons. Turn to the person next to you and give them a hug. Someone you don't know. Go hug somebody. Go ahead and spread it out. Mass spreader. It's a mass spreader event. It's a mass spreader event. It's a mass spreader event. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's a mass spreader event. Now everybody come up and grab a Tide Pod. Let's eat. The stupidity is breathtaking, literally. Many of those people will be on a ventilator soon. And tomorrow's the big one. The million more on March is tomorrow. President Trump says he'll be there. Which of course he will. Trump still has a lot of supporters. He still has a plenty of talking heads who eagerly peddle these cockamamie claims that the election was stolen, but none are more blindly loyal to this cause than a crazy old woman named Lou Dobbs. We're, uh... Eight weeks from the election, and we still don't have verifiable, tangible support for uh, the uh, for the the crimes that everyone knows were committed. That is defrauding uh, other uh, citizens who voted uh, with fraudulent votes. We know that's the case in Nevada. We know it's the case in Pennsylvania, and a number of other states. But we have had a devil of a time. Uh, finding actual proof. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody knows crimes are committed. We just can't find actual proof. But that's not going to stop us from tearing this country apart. At least a dozen Republican senators and about 140 Republicans in the House are planning to object to certifying the results of the election tomorrow. It's a move that'll certainly fail. The only question now is, what is Mike Pence going to do about it? Pence is in a pickle because the vice president is the one who officially declares the winner. And Boss Baby is pressuring Pence to say he's the winner, which makes no sense. So by that logic, Al Gore could have declared himself to be president. But that didn't stop Trump from tweeting, the vice president has the power to reject fraudulently chosen electors, which is, again, not true. The vice president's role is ceremonial. It's like the Oscars. He basically opens the envelope and announces the name. But Trump wants them to pull a la-la land. And Mike Pence is now in a tight spot. They had lunch today, Trump and Pence, which must have been fun. Something tells me tomorrow morning some very important Space Force business is going to come up that Mike Pence has to deal with personally. What? There's trouble on Mars? I'm sorry, Mr. President. I can't go to the certification. Can you imagine how sweet it's going to be when after years of Mike Pence kissing the president's Kentucky fried ass like a, a Rottweiler licks a roast beef, Trump turns on him at the last minute? Poor Mike Pence. He hasn't been this stressed out since the time he saw a woman in short sleeves. This was another good one from the family Trump. Yesterday, Ivanka posted a selfie on her way to Georgia with Presidaddy, and there they are on Air Force One. He's tweeting. It's a weird photo, but the weirdest thing is who she tagged. She tagged Kelly Leffler, David Perdue, Dan Scavino, the GOP, and Meatloaf, the singer. 
<laughs> no reason that anyone explained. I don't know, maybe it was a subtle way of telling her father she'll do anything for love, but she won't do that. But we have a lot to look forward to tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm at home hunkered down. Hopefully you are too. And we've learned a lot during this pandemic. One of these things that one of the things that I've learned from interviewing people who are wearing masks is that we are entirely in control of what they say. We realize that when your mouth is covered, it's very easy to swap people's voices. And that gave birth to a new feature we call masking questions. Ben and KN, let me ask you, what do you like to do for fun? Uh, work. <laughs> Take photos. Ben, what do you like to do for fun? Play in my backyard and play with my dogs a lot. Nasio, if you were president, what's the first thing you would do? Children's rights, like, yes, children's rights. Daniela, if you were president, what's the first thing you would do? I would buy me a Lamborghini. Ignacio, what are your favorite snacks? Uh, chips, cookies. Daniela, what are your favorite snacks? I like cheesecake. I like cheesecake overall, my favorite. Ignacio, what's your favorite drink? Orange juice. Daniela, what's your favorite drink? I like tequila on the rocks. <laughs> Christine, what's the last book you read? Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Susanna, what's the last book you read? Fifty Shades of Grey. Christine, what do you do when you're feeling stressed out? How do you relax? Uh, I probably just go in my room <laughs> and I just sit there, play with my iPad. Zena, what do you do to relax <laughs> when you're feeling stressed out? Honestly, smoke weed. <laughs> Massimo, what do you like to do for fun? I like to do TikTok videos. Giovanna, what do you like to do for fun? I pretend to be a dinosaur. Ashley, how's your love life? I don't have one. Dalton, how's your love life? That's good. What do you mean? I have a boyfriend. What's his deal? He's an electrician. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel Live. <laughs> this is ridiculous.